nosy, computer-savvy Rocket League players have been digging into the game files pretty much since launch in 2015. Now a lot of times this just results in some early sneak previews of upcoming items or future events. These are exciting at the time, but don't age well. For example, when the Painted Dominus was found in the game files in December 2019, it sparked a lot of discussion as players tried to guess how much it would cost and when it would come out. Well, a month later, it arrived in the item shop, and this game files hacking story isn't really interesting anymore. But this video is not about those kind of finds. Our focus today is probably best summed up by the Psyonix developer comment on a Reddit post that leaked some upcoming items in 2015. There he cautioned, just because something is in the package does not mean it will see the light of day. Some of this stuff will make it out, some of it won't. Some of these are still in progress or remnants of previous experiments. Yes, in this video, we're going to look at some unique things found in the Rocket League game files that have never been released. So let's get right into it with a feature that's been a constant request by Rocket League players for years. But a lot of people don't know, it's actually been in the game files since at least 2016. And Psyonix has actually already addressed the reasons why it's never been implemented. Have you figured out what you're looking at yet? Let me give you a clue. Yes, we're talking about Underglow. It seems like a cool idea to have customizable lights under your cars, but here you can see Psyonix dev Cory explain why it hasn't been added. He says, we think Underglow is really cool, but it's not technically feasible at this time for a couple reasons. The primary one is performance, in part because we're an Unreal Engine 3 game, and in part because of how our grass is implemented. We can't dynamically light the field under every car without destroying everyone's FPS. There are possible futures where we upgrade our renderer, redo our grass tech to make this possible, but it's a pretty huge undertaking, which for the moment makes Underglow not realistic. So while not completely impossible, it is clear that there would be a lot of work and changes just for one cosmetic that might come with other issues. Now some people will no doubt point to the Alpha Console plugin for Bacchus mod, which does have an Underglow feature, but it's important to note that when you use it, you're only rendering it on your own client, which isn't a good representation of what it would be like if everyone in the lobby had Underglow. And secondly, it doesn't work on grass or sand due to the limitations mentioned by Cory. Underglow being in the game files does at least show us that Psyonix can think of the same cool ideas we do as players, but just having an idea is a lot simpler than the reality of making it work in game. Sometimes the time between an item being found in the game files and it actually making it into the game can be quite long. For example, the fur paint finish was discovered as far back as 2015, but didn't become available until the turbo crate dropped almost two years later. But for this section, I want to talk about two items that were found in 2017, but still haven't been released as of this recording in February 2021. The wheel is designated GA819HB, and the decal is SWT-T, or more likely, Sweet T. These items were part of a cancelled Brisk promotion that was actually mentioned in some versions of the second anniversary patch notes. Brisk was one of the major sponsors of RLCS in 2017, with casters like Gibbs and JamesBot even appearing in a few commercials. This personal space issue, can you please move over there? Okay. Just trying to win a game here. Two, can you actually grab me some more Brisk of watermelon and lemonade? They're only 7-Eleven, very limited, and I'm almost out. Yeah, I was gonna go there anyway. Uh, thanks, dude. Can you actually grab all of them for me? James, grab all of them! James, I'm serious! It seems there are supposed to be redeemable codes that you'd find under the lid of a bottle that you would then use to get these items. Why the plans got scrapped is unclear, but the items have been in limbo ever since. Now I've seen some people claim that the swirls decal that came out in the spring of 2018 is essentially the same as Sweet Tea, but as you can see, there is some differences. Regardless, I think the multicolored brisk wheels are the best of the two, and it's kind of sad they aren't available. But remember, if you are on Steam or Epic, you can still access these through Bacchus Mod, though of course they will not be visible to others in game. The idea of having a minimap or radar in Rocket League was a common topic of discussion when the game first came out. Even now, new players are still bringing it up on Reddit from time to time, and some streams are starting to use minimap overlays for their broadcast. Now, most people do agree that a minimap could be useful, but that doesn't mean it needs to be in the game. And Psyonix obviously came to the same conclusion. But it was interesting to find out that in 2015, someone claimed to find a minimap in the game files. Now, at first, I was a little skeptical that this was actually proof that a minimap was considered by the devs. But I was able to go back to 2014 during Alpha and find this comment from a Psyonix developer on Reddit showing that the idea was actually on the table for a while. How this map would have worked, it's not really known. Would it have shown the boost pads that were up, both the opponents and teammates, the ball? Either way, it's a cool concept and yes, would be useful, but in the end, unnecessary. Awareness is a part of skill in Rocket League and after five years, there's no way they're gonna change that now. Now it's not uncommon for players to assume Psyonix does nothing all day but sit around and try and come up with the next overpriced cosmetic to put in the item shop. 
But in reality, there is no doubt a constant stream of gameplay ideas, prototypes, and experiments that go on behind the scenes that we just don't get told about. This is made evident by a leak from a few years ago when a redditor named Cat Exception spelled out some unique test game modes he had found in the game files. Let's take a look at a few of them. The first one is called 500, which is essentially a game in which the ball would be assigned a random point value and shot into the air at varying speeds. The first person to touch the ball before it hits the ground gets the allotted points, and the first to 500 wins. Next we have an American football type game, which might have even been the origins of Gridiron, which recently came out as a limited time mode. But in this one, there's no scoring. Instead, the longer you can protect and carry the ball, the more points you get. And finally, Treasure Hunt. An invisible ball is floating somewhere in the map. You have to fly around in zero gravity with only an indicator that tells you the distance between you and the ball, not the direction. Kind of like a game of hot and cold. If you hit the ball, you get five points and it respawns somewhere else. Probably the most well-known leaked game mode in Rocket League history is something called the Volleyball Test Map, which was discovered in 2016. It stands out because for a while you were actually able to swap out some game files and try it yourself. In this mode, you can see that Cyanix was trying to find a volleyball type game that didn't necessarily require players to keep the ball from touching the ground. As they would later state, such a traditional scoring method was found to be too difficult and slow paced for lower ranked players. In this test map, it appears that scoring happens one of two ways. Either the ball falls into the surrounding void, or it touches the ground three times. I would probably assume that this is what eventually led us to drop shot. The mode was pretty glitchy, with goals sometimes happening at random times, and I especially wanted to show this part, where the players decided to try and use a puck and it ended up giving them this Saturn-like looking ball. To finish up, I want to tell you a story about something I was reminded of during my research for this video. This isn't about another thing players have found in the game files, instead, it is about what players used to remove from their game files. In December 2015, Rocket League released its first non-standard map, Wasteland. No doubt you've played on today's version of Wasteland, but on release, Wasteland actually had a curved floor. It was the first step in Psyonix's plan to bring more variety to the game. But a lot of people were not happy with this change, and soon an exploit was found and began to be shared around. You see, if you removed Wasteland from your game files, any match that was going to be on that map would fail to load, and thus a player could essentially avoid any map he wanted. Psyonix was quick to respond, and game file checks were implemented that gave MMR punishment and bans to anyone that was found to have altered their map files. I know this personally is still in effect because I unintentionally have been caught by it. It used to be a common method to play custom maps by renaming them Rocket Labs Underpass. Then when you load up Underpass, you would instead be on your custom map. Now if you don't switch the maps back and queue for Rumble, you may be in for a surprise because Rumble actually uses Rocket Lab Underpass. So when the game file doesn't match the map you're going on, you get an instant matchmaking ban. Whoops. I hope you enjoyed this look and some of the more interesting things found in the Rocket League game files. Please make sure you do hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and use code ROCKETSLEDGE in the item shop to support this channel. Also, I'm regularly streaming on Twitch, so make sure you check out the pinned comment for the link and drop a follow to be notified about my next stream. My name is Rocket Sledge, thanks for watching.